So I just have a short little bit of lecture for you on Gray, Jeffrey Gray's work with the BISBAS scale. Um, so I have a question for you. Think about what you would do. So imagine that there's some band that you really like, and this happens right now, today, right when you're looking at this, in about an hour. Um, someone comes up to you and says, hey, I have um, these tickets to this concert. It's this favorite group that you have. I don't know who that might be, but this is your favorite group. And it's going to be this weekend. And you know, this person was planning to go and he has an extra ticket or she has an extra ticket. And you know that you're going to fly and you can just come on the plane because it's a, a little group of people. Um, and they have a private plane, so you could just join them and you're going to fly to this really amazing place for this concert. And you just met this person. And you are kind of looking around to be in a relationship, but now here comes this person that you find really interesting, but you don't really know them very well. And now they've invited you to this concert and flying you to this really cool place. Everything like that happens. So the question is, and this is going to happen, by the way, and it's it's now imagine that this is like Thursday and you're going to be leaving Friday after work. So this is the scenario and this is the question I have for you. Do you say yes or do you say no? And when I teach this in a live class with people, I ask them to with a show of hands to indicate whether they're going to say yes. And if you look around every classroom I've had teaching this content, I get pretty much a 50-50 divide. Half the class says yes and half says no. And so the next thing I do, now I don't know what you said, but if you said yes, I'm going to say this to you. What are you thinking? You have to work this weekend. You have responsibilities. You can't just go away. You don't even know this person. Think about what might happen. And someone in that group who said, yes, they're going to go would say, yeah, but this is once in a lifetime. We have to take our chances. I can't let this opportunity pass up. The opportunity for pleasure is too great. And if you say no to those people, I say things like, what the heck? This is a once in a lifetime chance. You're not going to have another opportunity. You may never have another opportunity like this. You might regret this the rest of your life if you decline to go. You, the other things will still be there when you get back. That's the kind of thing. And they still say, I don't even know this person. I'm not going to take a chance like that. I have to work. I've committed myself. And so people tend to divide into one of two camps as they think this over. So this is the camp that Jeffrey Gray divides people into according to this BISBAS scale. So behavioral inhibition system tend to be motivated to avoid punishment. And we don't mean someone else is going to punish you. We mean something bad might happen. That's your punishment. And people who have high in biz tend to make their decisions based on avoiding harm, based on avoiding bad things that might happen. And that tends to motivate their behavior. I want to stay away from things that might happen that might be bad. And so what motivates you? Are you motivated to avoid harm like this? Now, if you have too much of biz, um, then you're going to be prone to anxiety and worrying. You might not have as much pleasure in life as you could. If you don't have enough behavioral inhibition, you might be prone to impulsivity or risk taking or attention deficit disorder. And people who are high in behavioral inhibition systems tend to have higher activity in the hippocampus related to memory. And remember, your hippocampus is right by your amygdala related to emotion and especially strong with theory type emotion. And so you have a really good memory for these things that scared you at some time. People also in this condition tend to have high or norepinephrine, which is a, a hormone linked to fight or flight responses. So you get really active when bad things happen and also tend to be higher in serotonin, which I don't have an explanation for at this time. And when you take the scale, people who are high in biz tend to agree with statements like criticism and scolding hurts me quite a bit, which there again might be related to that big response to and long memory for bad things that happen. Now, people who are in the who are higher People who said yes, they're going to go, 
might be higher in the behavioral activation system. And so they might be more motivated to seek rewards or even might be dependent on rewards. So their decision might be based on, well, this could be fun and I don't wanna miss out on fun. Whereas the high biz people would be more motivated by this could be harmful and I don't want to expose myself to potential harm. So if you have too much baz, you might be prone to impulsivity, rewards, or addiction. Too little baz, you might not have very much pleasure in your life. So neurologically or physiologically, what's happening? High baths tend to have lower levels of norepinephrine, so less of that sympathetic activation if bad things happen. Lower activity in the limbic system, so that's the emotional system, and it's linked to that memory system, so they're not taking as much um, long-term damage from being punished or from having a bad thing happen. And a high response to dopamine, like an exaggeration of the normal reward system. So they're getting a lot of pleasure from these things. And they would tend to agree on the scale with statements like, I crave excitement and new sensation. So we do measure um, the physiological differences by EEG, not MRI or fMRI. So we're just getting surface readings of electrical activity in the brain. And um, what we find is that people who are high in VAS have higher left frontal activation in the EEG. And this is just a consistent pattern with people with this approach tendency. So the left front frontal activation is positively associated with approach behaviors. It's inversely correlated with depression. So depressed people tend to not have, tend to have low levels of left frontal activation. And we can increase this with meditation. So if we meditate, we feel a, a more calm sense and we can increase our uh, experience of pleasure. So um, that is the scale and we will be going